Stress is real. It happens to everyone, adults and kids alike. It's important to know how to recognize the signs and the healthy steps for managing stress. Joining us for To Your Well-Being is Dr. Jenna Mendelson, licensed clinical psychologist with Labauer Behavioral Medicine. All right, so we hear all the time the word stress, but what exactly is stress? Yeah, I think in our current cultural context, stress has a lot of negative associations, but actually the formal definition of the word is pretty neutral. It's any environmental or physical pressure that elicits a response from an organism. And when you think about it that way, it's actually something that's been really necessary and important for adaptation and survival. And in our modern world, some degree of stress is healthy and can help us grow as people and, and achieve our personal goals. So then that makes me think that stress is not always bad for you. Exactly. It's not. Some amount of stress is healthy and, and normal and just a part of day-to-day -day life. It's really when it keeps on going at elevated levels for an extended period of time that it be, can become problematic. All right, so then let's take a look at some signs that stress is on the negative side impacting your physical health. Yeah, so stress is a very real physiological response that humans have adapted to have over, over time. Um, in our early history, that helped us to survive when faced with immediate acute stressors like running from a tiger. Um, of course, those aren't the kinds of stressors that most of us face currently, but our response can be very similar. And as a result of the physiological basis of that response, we can experience physiological symptoms of stress. Those can include general muscular aches and pains, chest pains, or feeling like your heart is racing, feeling exhausted all the time, or having trouble sleeping, headaches or dizziness or even shaking, high blood pressure can be the result of stress, muscle tension or jaw clenching, or even stomach and digestive problems can all be the result of stress. And those are things that are very common for people to have any and all times. All right, so that's physical. What about mental? What about your mental health and social well-being? Yeah, so of course there are also emotional symptoms of stress, and that can include being generally more emotional than usual, so being quicker to get angry or quicker to become tearful, though that can be a symptom of excessive stress. Um, feeling overwhelmed or on edge can be a symptom of stress. Having trouble keeping track of things or remembering things that you need to remember. Having trouble focusing and having trouble getting things done, like having the initiative to start and see things all the way through. Those can all also be symptoms of stress. All right, so obviously any adult who's watching this goes, okay, I can relate. <laughs> I got all those things, okay. But does stress show up the same in children as it does in adults? Many of those symptoms do show up in children, but something that can be a little different among kids is they may not know that what they're experiencing is stress or they may not have the words to express it. So it can come out a little bit differently, um, such as in the form of abrupt behavioral changes, children acting extra grouchy or even acting out in an angry or aggressive way can be the result of stress. Children who are avoiding things that they used to enjoy or um, trying, trying not to do things that they used to easily do, that can also be a sign of stress. All right, so now that we've kind of like done the whole gamut of what stress can cause mentally and physically, and yes, it can be a good thing, and yes, it can be a bad thing, what are some healthy steps to reduce and manage the stress that, that's not so healthy? Yeah, um, so some healthy things that uh, we could all do to manage stress. Exercise is really, really effective at managing stress. What typically gets recommended is 30 minutes a day, five days a week. There's some newer research that's come out suggesting that shorter, more intense bursts of exercise, like 10 or 15 minutes, can actually have a comparable benefit. So I tend to recommend just starting where you are and doing what you can. These benefits are so well documented that I think starting some kind of exercise, you can anticipate to feel a little bit better. Um, also maintaining social support. So I think a lot of times when we get stressed out, we can feel like we don't have time to talk to friends on the phone or arrange to get together when actually 
making time for those kinds of activities and connecting with the people we love can be a way to manage our stress and be more effective in our day-to-day -day lives. Okay, so those are the healthy ways to deal with stress. How about the unhealthy things that many of us probably do that we should go, oh, okay, let's not do those anymore? Yeah. Some unhealthy ways at managing stress include, of course, using substances excessively to manage that stressed out feeling. We know alcohol use is up significantly since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic. That can actually also include excessive use of caffeine. So people will often feel like they just have so much to get done and they're not going to have the energy to do it all and can also use caffeine quite a bit. And that can be a sign that stress is excessive. Sometimes, too, people will turn to risky behaviors that can put themselves and others in harm's way, like driving really fast on the highway for that dopamine rush, which might relieve stress in the moment, but of course is really dangerous and can have long-term negative impacts. Cause other kinds of stress. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about when we should be seeking help and what those options look like. That's coming back. We are back with Dr. Jenna Mendelson, licensed clinical psychologist with Labauer Behavioral Medicine. So how do we know when the stress is too much and we need to get some kind of help and what are those options for help? A major red flag that stress may have gotten to be too much is if you start having thoughts like, it wouldn't be so bad if I didn't wake up tomorrow. Where like, it's not quite like, suicidal ideation, but like you're feeling like it would be pretty good if this situation ended. That is a good sign that you are dealing with too much stress, that the situation has become too much and it's time to get help. I often say though, you, you don't have to wait till it's a crisis to get help. In fact, in many ways, it's better to just get some help if you're feeling like there's stress in your life and you could use some better coping strategies. Kind of like when you do your proactive doctor's appointments, that kind of thing too, just to tune up to make sure that you're in the right place, mentally, physically, exactly. all of that. Okay. So what impact has COVID had that you've seen on kids when it comes to stress and anxiety levels? Yeah, so, so COVID has really triggered a mental health crisis among children and adolescents. In the U.S. and really around the world, um, there's now a really strong body of evidence indicating that rates of depression and anxiety are higher than ever among children and especially older adolescents, girls, and um, people with neurodiversities. So it's, it's really a crisis at this point. All right, so what do we do about that? What advice do you have for the parents or the caregivers to help their kids who have been impacted this way and are not feeling good physically and mentally? Mm -hmm. the, the nice thing about this research is that it did also give us a peek into what are protective factors. So the kids who were able to cope more effectively with COVID and, and not go on to develop depression and anxiety had a few factors in place, including regular exercise, regular connection with, with some kind of social support, positive relationships with their families, and access to some kind of entertainment, which of course um, was was really hard during the initial COVID lockdowns, but uh, luckily has gotten easier. Mm -hmm. Entertainment, like not the kind of like at home, just video games entertainment. Yeah, I think probably early in COVID, maybe it was just at home, just video games, but you know, the more variety of entertainment, the better. Okay, all right. Now people are going to baseball games and things of that nature and going to museums and science centers and things of that nature. Okay, so exactly. end of grade course testing. It is right around the corner. Um, that mm -hmm. can cause a lot of stress for school-aged children and their parents. So what <laughs> advice do you have for those parents and caregivers to help them through that time? Yeah, I think something that can be so stressful about these end of grade tests, especially for younger kids who maybe haven't encountered this kind of major test that covers so much um, before is just how unstructured that at-home studying can be. So I think something parents can do to help kids is to add some structure. And that means helping them have designated times where they study, but at least as importantly that they have designated times where they do things to relax and unwind, like get outside and play with friends and, mm -hmm. and do things that they enjoy. Okay. And are there some things that you recommend parents avoid saying and avoid doing? 
I encourage parents to focus on the process, not the outcome. So providing praise and support for all the hard work their kids are putting, putting in and placing less of an emphasis on what the grade might be in the end. So helping them to, to focus on rising to this challenge and all the things that they are doing, the things that are under their control, rather than whatever their grade might be when it's all said and done. All right, we have just about a minute. I'm looking for some conversation starters for parents so that they can approach situations like with their kids. Mm -hmm. like, like testing type situations? Sure, or just stress situations. Yeah, I think it depends on the kid. So there are some kids who will really um, rise to the occasion of an open-ended question and just you can ask how have things been going lately um, and, and the floodgates will open. Other kids need a more closed-ended question. So like I noticed, I noticed you seemed a little grouchier lately. Is everything okay? I know you've got the EOGs coming, so kind of containing it in that way. Either way, um, a really important component is the focused intent focused attention that comes with the question. Okay, so either open-ended or closed, know your kid, try maybe one or both of them and see what you get. All right, if you missed any of this, the information is gonna be on our website, wfmynews2.com.